So thank you everyone for joining this session. Um, my name is George Bujeya, one of the national contact points at MCST. And today I'll be presenting you the cluster five, which is climate, energy, and mobility, including the uh, relevant missions and partnerships. Um, uh, note, um, primarily a disclaimer that the information provided here is based on the draft version um, that has been issued by the European Commission. And of course, these are non-legally binding and are subject to change. So we'll start off with um, a very brief overview about Horizon Euro program and the structure it um, takes. So uh, we have the, of course, the core part, which is based on the three pillars, very similar to the previous program. Uh, pillar one is about excellent science, um, mostly aimed at the academic sector and higher education institutions. Pillar two um, addresses the clusters where we will be foc focusing on this session specifically on one of them. And pillar three um, incorporates the European Innovation Council and the European uh, Institute of Innovation and Technology. Um, we also have a horizontal part, which is widening participation and strengthening, strengthening the European research area. And we also have two side programs which complement Horizon Europe, which are the European Defence Fund and Euratom program, uh, both fission and fusion. So moving on, um, we have prepared a very short video about the European uh, Horizon, sorry, Horizon Europe novelties. Um, so I'll start off the video. So the five main novelties that we have are the European Innovation Council, the missions, and uh, the rest will come in the video. So the European Innovation Council, the EIC will help researchers to reach the market. It's structured on two schemes. Uh, the EIC Pathfinder and also the EIC Accelerator. Then we have the missions. I will address these at the very end of my presentation. We also have this new novelty about the, uh, Open Research Europe and also partnerships which again i will address in this presentation at the very end and i will cover some information about each type of partnership gender equality plans i'll touch upon these very soon With regards to novelties, uh, we will um, be doing further webinars, so we will address all these topics, which we won't have addressed today in, in follow-up um, sessions. So going into Horizon Europe and how do you participate? So the first thing I want to tell you about is um, the publication titled Keeping It Simple, Competitive, Fair and Transparent and Easy to Access. This is the motto um, that the European Commission has taken in regards to uh, participation in Horizon Europe. So the link um, shown there uh, takes you to um, a very in interesting document that I suggest you have a read through because it, it makes it very clear on, on how to compete and secure um, uh, funding in Horizon Europe. So here I have listed the basic criteria for participation, namely the three legal entities from three different member states or associated countries, and with at least one of them established in a member state. Of course, you may bring on board other partners from any country, so you can take people with you um, on board locally, so other entities or other European partners or non-European partners, as long as you meet the minimum criteria. Of course, you have to always keep in mind to allocate the necessary resources for the duration of the project. Otherwise, you might jeopardize the quality of the consortium. 
Um, we hinted towards the uh, gender equality plans in the video. So as of 2022, these will be eligibility criteria for public bodies, research organization, and higher education institutions. Uh, we will provide further insight on the gender equality plans in other sessions but it's quite important for these type of organizations to be aware that they need to prepare these and have them ready. Otherwise, they might be disqualified from uh, participating post-2022. Um, another note is to always keep in mind to check the general annexes regarding participation of associate, associated countries. Um, because these um, are not yet in place, so it's quite important to um, account for that. Of course, there are different type of criteria that apply to other parts of the program. Moving on, um, these are the three types of actions um, that you will find in most of the program. And this is the main type of actions um, that are applied within cluster five. And also you have here the, the funding rates indicated as well. So let's uh, give an overview of each. So research and innovation, innovation actions or abbreviated as RIA. These are activities that aim primarily to establish new knowledge or to explore the feasibility of new or improved technology, products, processes, service, or solutions. These may include basic and applied research, technology development and integration, testing, demonstration, and validation of a small scale prototype in a laboratory or a simulated environment. So what we're talking about here is technology readiness level one to four or um, abbreviated as TRL. So for this type of action, the RIA actions are 100% funding for any type of uh, legal entity. And again, the minimum criteria still applies, which is three, uh, three beneficiaries. Um, innovation actions or otherwise IA actions. Um, these are activities that aim directly to produce plans and arrangements or designs for new altered or improved products, processes or services. These activities may include prototyping, testing, demonstrating, piloting, large scale product validation and market replication. So here we are talking about um, technology readiness level five to nine. Um, in the case of innovation actions, these are 70% funded. However, for nonprofit legal entities, such as public bodies, these are funded at 100%, not 70%. Um, finally, uh, coordination and support actions, CSAs. These are activities that contribute to the objectives of Horizon Europe. This excludes RNI activities, except those carried out under the widening participation and spreading excellence um, part um, component of the program. Um, this is the, the horizontal part, basically, of the program. Um, also eligible are bottom-up uh, coordination actions which promote cooperation between legal entities from member states and associated countries to strengthen the European research area and which receive uh, no EU uh, co-funding for research activities. Um, in the case of CSAs, um, you are 100% funded for your activities and the minimum criteria, there is one beneficiary. Uh, we always um, advise our clients, you know, to bring on board as many partners as possible and do not just meet the basic criteria, bring on partners that bring quality to the project. And finally, um, throughout these type of actions, you always have a 25% indirect cost for all actions. So what this means is um, whatever request you put to the commission, this will include um, 25% of the eligible cost as indirect cost to cover your overheads. Moving on, um, here I've provided a very top level um, overview of climate, uh, sorry, of cluster five being climate, energy, and mobility. I'm going to try and explain um, the entire program in one slide, which is very difficult, but I, I, I attempt it. So the first note I want to start off with is that the 
the cluster five uh, work program is available on the uh, commission expert register so it's open to the public and i've provided a link to it on the left hand side so please refer to it uh, in parallel to this presentation so um with regards to climate um this addresses uh, destination one and two energy destination three and four and mobility destination five and six basically what you're seeing on on this slide is the implementation uh, areas across the, the thematic fields so what you have to account for here is there's 175 over 175 topics uh, for the year 2021-2022. In total, we're talking about about 15 billion uh, euros in funding um, across the entirety of the program. Um, I've provided um, the budgets for 2021 and 2022 in, in each area. Um, on the right hand side also gave an indication of the first deadlines that you can expect um, this year um, to give a more holistic overview basically the overarching driver for this cluster is to accelerate the twin green and digital transition and associate uh, associated transformation of our economy industry and society with a view to achieve climate neut neutrality in Europe by 2050. This encompasses the transition to greenhouse neutrality of the energy and mobility sectors by 2050 at the latest, was of course boosting um, their competitiveness, reliant, uh, resilience, and uh, utility for citizens and society. So acti activities of this works, uh, work program support the implementation, of course, of the Paris Agreement and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals by creating more jobs, accelerating the economy and social so societal transformation, faster uh, digitalization by general innovation based and inclusive growth activities while aiding European uh, recovery in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis. Also uh, contributing directly to the commission priority uh, priorities of um, the European Green Deal, a Europe fit uh, for the digital age and an economy that works for the people. Um, the European Commission strategic vision, a clean planet for all, outlines that the move to climate neutrality along with uh, faster digitalization and accelerated economy and societal changes will transform the energy and mobility sectors in the coming decade, making them increasingly intertwined. Um, and basically, that is why we have um, an amalgamation of these areas. Um, a key contribution to success is the development of a wide portfolio from a life cycle perspective, um, being cost effective, climate neutral alternatives for. Um, emitting activities based on or often in combination with enhanced sector coupling, digitalization, system integration and leveraging, and whenever appropriate, the existing Earth Observation and Monitoring Program Copernicus, thus being the twin green digital transition requiring um, installing profound changes and societal practices as a result, um, engaging society in the co-design and co-development and co-implementation of innovation through social uh, innovation. Um, Cluster 5, of course, supports the EU strategic objectives through activities included in this work program and through the support of um, institutionalized European partnership, partnerships, uh, which are implemented through dedicated structures. Although the latter activities being the institutionalized partnerships are not included in this work program, it is of great importance to maximize synergies and coherence between uh, these activities, regardless of their implement implementation mode. I will el elaborate further on this later on in this presentation. So um, activities in this work program will contribute to all key strategic orientations of the strategic plan. Um, I believe 
KSOC, which is the one being the most directly contributed towards. So to contribute to the program level KSOs, cluster five will deliver on six specific expected impacts. And in this work program, each expected impact has been transformed into a, a specific destination. This destination-based work program structure follows a thematic center of gravity approach, but activities in a given destination can, of course, have a cross-cutting character and will often contribute to multiple expected impacts. The specific contribution to the overall expected impact is explained in the introductory, introductory text of each destination. So I do recommend that you do read um, the work uh, program part, um, which is the introduction just um, following the destination. So according to the intervention logic of this work program, destination one um, fosters climate science and thus help to identify effective and efficient pathways and response to climate change. Destination two supports different cross-cutting technologies and solutions for climate, energy, and mobility application. And destination three and four focus mainly on energy issues, where destination three on making energy supply more sustainable, secure, and competitive and destination four on reducing energy demand of buildings and industry and enabling the more active role in smart energy systems. Destination five and six improve the performance of transport modes and mobility solutions. Specifically, destination five increases the competitiveness and climate or environmental performance of different transport modes while destination six advances mobility services and solutions at system level for passengers and goods. Um, so basically the commission pushes the acceleration of clean energy innovation through the Mission Innovation Initiative, which was launched under COP21 and currently comprises 24 countries and the European Commission. International cooperation of EU member states and associated countries in the context of mission innovation and relevant uh, topics in this work program is encouraged. In addition, this work program specifically addresses cooperation with African countries on renewable energy in line with the spirit of the Paris Agreement, which emphasizes the need for global cooperation on technology development and transfer. Um, activities in this work program um, have been designed together with the EU member states and EEA countries and the European Parliament, as well as stakeholders and interested citizens. Um, that was my attempt to cover cluster five in one slide. So um, going forward, we're, we're going to address each destination. Um, sorry for taking so much time with one slide, but I believe that was necessary to give a holistic overview of this uh, work program. So moving on, um, destination one, climate science and response for transformation towards climate neutrality, that being the title. Here we have um, an overall indicative budget of 272 million euros. We expect 43 projects to be funded. The main target areas are advancing climate science, societal trans uh, transition towards a climate neutral and climate resilient society by 2050, Green has uh, gas reduction by 2030. And here, the European Commission encourages complementarities with cluster four and cluster six. So if you're working in this field, make sure to even look at those work, um, sorry, at those clusters. Um, this destination contributes directly to the strategic plan, uh, key strategic orientation D, uh, making Europe the first digitally led um, circular climate neutral and sustainable economy through the transformation of its mobility, energy, and uh, construction and production systems, and the impact area climate uh, change mitigation and ad adaptation. Um, in line with the strategic plan, the overall expected impact of this destination is to contribute to the transition to a climate neutral and resilient society and economy and enabling, uh, enable, sorry, through advanced climate science pathways and responses to climate change. 
um, including mitigation and adaptation and behavioral uh, transformation. Um, on a final note, um, there are a total of 15 research innovation actions, uh, 40 projects more or less to be funded, um, a total of two uh, CSAs um, with about three projects to be funded. And that should bring us to a close on this slide. Yes. So um, the final um, comment I had about this slide is there are only three topics which will be of two-stage uh, nature. Moving on to the next slide. So I wanted to, uh, before moving on to the uh, description of the calls, um, I wanted to en uh, enable you by uh, uh, telling you how to interpret the call identifier and structure of the topic. So as an example here, I put um, just um, a topic. Uh, it's about restoration of neutral wet, uh, natural wetlands, wetlands and uh, floodplains. So um, how do you kind of interpret the work program and topic structure? So the first thing you have to look at is the specific conditions. Here you will find the expected EU contribution per project, which gives you um, the indicative budget for the specific project and also the uh, available budget in, in its totality for that specific uh, topic. So in, in this example here, you see um, six to seven million and 20 million total budget. So from that, you can get an idea of the amount of projects that will be funded. And I elaborate further on this in, in this uh, forthcoming slides. And of course, what type of action um, is, is listed. So that gives you an indication of where your project has to be in terms of technology readiness level or type of implementation. And of course, the expected outcome and the scope um, give, give you clear directions. And you should read the, this, uh, this text as your Bible to address the call. So it's quite important to read um, the call text as it is. And I give a, an example here. So the expected outcome, it states, project results are expected to contribute to some of the following expected outcomes. So if you have wording such as some, or two or more, or whatever it is, make sure to cl clearly understand the keywords that are used, as they are quite important. So ensure to read the, um, the published text on the funding and tender portal, because that is the final text and that is um, what you have to aim for, not the drafts. So very important to um, always refer to the funding and tendering portal. And I always remind clients to always check the uh, frequently uh, asked questions uh, section because there are um, clarifications there that are quite important. So it's, uh, it's very important to take this into account once you're writing the proposal. And also there could be topic updates. So um, make sure to always check in on the topic you're working on. So, um, how do you interpret the call and uh, identifier? So here we have an example. So the first part gives you an indication of the program. The next part gives you the cluster, which is it is being implemented under. The next part, which is the year, gives you an indication of the deadline. So immediately you can tell if, if you um, can expect the deadline to be within 2021 or 2022. The next part is giving you an indication of the destination. And the next part gives you the area and topic number. So what we mean by area is the specific implementation. So moving on, um, destination one um, has a lot of topics as well. We have um, the first deadline being in September 7, 2021. So the, the topics you see here um, basically all uh, have uh, mixed 
type of uh, budgets. So you can see uh, budgets ranging from um, eight, sorry, 10 million to um, around 3 million and 2 million. So it's quite important to always um, check out the final uh, text um, on the draft because at, at the moment they are not clear cut budgets. Um, since there are um, too many topics to present, um, I have only uh, put here the titles for the forthcoming 2021 deadlines. On the next slide, you will see um, the specific topics and call titles. Um, and I will take this approach across uh, most of the presentation. So for destination one, these are the initial nine topics um, under this call, which is two stage, and it will be implemented with a deadline in 2022. You have um, three calls here. Um, again, you have most of them, not most of them, but all of them, the three of them, uh, research innovation actions, and we have a total overall budget of 50 uh, million euros. Still under destination one, um, in, in the case of these calls, unfortunately, we do not have an indication of the either the opening or the deadlines. Um, but um, with regards to 2022, I haven't provided the call uh, titles as these might change. So I've only given you call titles for um, the deadlines in 2021. We have an indicative budget of 87 million here for um, this trench of call topics. Again, um, I've presented in this way so that you can quickly gather the information about the number of projects being funded and the budgets. So we move on to destination two. We have cross-sectorial solutions for the climate transition. We have um, an overall indicative budget of 383.5 million euros with 65 projects to be funded. The main target areas are a competitive and sustainable European battery value chain, efficient efficiency of European cities and communities, energy resources use and mobility patterns, and cities and communities overall sustainability emerging breakthrough technologies and climate solutions, citizen engaged, citizen and stakeholder engagement. And uh, as you can see here, we have a very mixed type of uh, actions. We covered most of, of the action types earlier on. So this, this destination covers thematic areas which are cross-cutting by nature and can provide key solutions for climate, energy, and mobility applications in line with the uh, scope of cluster five, such as uh, areas uh, of batteries, hydrogen, uh, communities and cities, early stage breakthrough technology, as well as citizen engagement. So here we have, I believe, 18 uh, research innovation actions, six uh, CSAs, one co-funded European partnership. I believe this is um, the UT partnership, which has um, 18.5 million from the 2021 budget and again another 18.5 million from the 22 budget um, here there's um, a total of two innovation actions um, more details on on the calls are shown in the next slide so let's move on so the first deadline for destination two being um, 19th October 2021 and they should open up these call topics um, as soon as the work program is adopted. So as you can see again we have a very mixed type of budget lines we have from 2.5 to budgets uh, up to 10 million and in the next slides um, I show you the remaining part of the the topics um, under this uh, call area. So there's a total of 16 with a deadline in, on the 19th October, 2021. Um, and the last part, I already explained this about the co-funded European partnership, which has um, budgetary allocations, both for 2021 and 2022. 
On this slide, I give you the specific uh, titles of each um, call topic. So um, post this uh, presentation, you can have a read through each one because um, it's impossible to present you these in, in, in one hour. So again, um, you have on the previous slide one through seven, and then you have here one through, uh, sorry, eight through 16. Um, what I, I'll go back to the previous slide. What I failed to mention here is um, at the top, I gave an indication of the implementation area. So calls one through seven are topics covering a competitive and sustainable European uh, battery value chain. Then the next area is about emerging breakthrough technologies and climate solutions. The next area being citizens and stakeholder engagement. And at the bottom, you see also communities and cities. So these are the areas um, that I elaborated further upon earlier. Moving on, these are the expected call topics for 2022. Again, I urge you to read um, the draft um, to get a better indication of what these calls are, as I have not provided here the, the headings um, or call titles of each topic. As you can see, there are a number of topics in 2022 with um, substantial budgets and opportunities for funding. Um, finally, um, I want to mention um, about communities and cities, although we have an indicative um, call uh, opening and deadline, we do not have a clear indication of the topics. Um, this being because this work program contains only a few activities and the bulk of the activities related to communities and cities will be introduced during 2021 as an update to the Horizon Europe work program. Um, once the preparatory phase of the Horizon Europe missions has been concluded. So unfortunately, I do not have further insights here. Destination three, we have uh, sustainable, secure, and competitive energy supply. We have an overall um, budget, overall budget of uh, 1.195 billion euros uh, with 121 projects to be funded. Main target areas are renewable energy technologies, energy system grids and storage. And finally, carbon capture utilization and storage, CCUS. Um, with regards to this destination, synergies with uh, activities in cluster four are possible for integrating renewable energy technologies and solutions in energy consuming industries. Um, complementarities with cluster six concern mainly biomass related activities. And uh, another point I would like to mention here, with, with, uh, which is in regards to um, do no harm principle. So in line with the do no harm principle for the environment, actions for all renewable energy technologies um, aim to also improve the environmental sustainability of the technologies, delivering uh, products with reduced greenhouse gas emissions and improvement uh, of environmental performance regarding water use, circularity, pollution, and ecosystems. So um, with regards to the, this call, we have, sorry, this destination, we have a total of 66 uh, call topics. Again, it's impossible to present all of these, so I've taken the liberty of explaining them in my own way. Um, we have 31 innovation actions, um, 26 innovation, sorry, 26 research and innovation actions, eight uh, CSAs, and one co-funded uh, call. So moving on, so destination three, um, the first deadline, which is the earliest deadline that we have, uh, which is foreseen for the 26th of August, 2021. So if you're interested in any of these uh, call topics, do reach out early as possible so we can give you further support and insights. Um, we expect the calls, of course, to be opened as soon as the work program is published. 
Um, apart from showing you like I've did in the other slides, um, I've indicated what are the implementation areas here. So the first three topics, um, we have global leadership in renewable energy, energy systems and grids and storage would be the next implementation area for topics four through 10. Moving on, um, complementing uh, topics four through 10 is uh, topic 11, 12, and 13, still on energy systems, grids, and storage. Call topics 14 and 15 um, cover the CCUS or carbon capture basically. And the bottom three topics, which are 16, 17, and 18, um, cover cross-cutting uh, issues. Um, again, here we have uh, one of the calls, which is called Topic 18 as a co-fund action. And some of the budget is already foreseen for 2022. Um, with regards to call Topic 18, it is expected the, that the partnership will organize joint calls on an annual basis from 2022 to 2027 and will consider ample time for the implementation of the co-funded project. So um, if you're interested in specifically in that topic, that is a point you should be aware of. Moving on, um, we continue with um, here the global leadership in renewable energy um, and a vast amount of calls, again, with the same deadline, 26th August, 2021. Uh, I think I have a mistake here because the opening is after the deadline. Apologies for that. I'll co correct it before sending out the information. Um, let's move on. Um, same um, implementation area, renewable energies. So we have further topics um, from 11 to 17. There is an overall budget for renewable energy for um, 2021 amounting to 290 million euros. So there are vast amounts of opportunities. Please reach out to us so we can support your um, project ideas across all renewable fields. Um, um, that includes photovoltaics, wind, um, floating platforms or tidal power and so forth. So um, almost all the thematic areas are covered in these calls. Again, under destination three, these are the indicated uh, topics for 2022. We have call topics one through 10. And on the next slide, I believe there are a further five. As you can note, most of these are innovation actions, of course, because we want to um, implement as fast as possible our energy transition goals. That was right. So these are the next um, topics, 11 through 15. And as you can see, there is only one research innovation action planned for 2022. So if you plan to do implementation in terms of renewable energy, and 2022 looks like a, a good year for you. Let's move on to the next uh, part. Again, for 2022, we have um, another thematic area here, uh, <clears throat> being D302. We have the indicated deadline in October 2022. And as you can see, there's um, eight topics with an overall indicative budget of 95 million euros. Next area being D303, again in 2020, 2022, and there are nine topics foreseen here with an overall um, 124.5 million euros envisioned. Destination four, which is efficient, sustainable, and inclusive energy use. We have oh, an overall indicative budget of 241 million euros, 36 projects um, are approximately to be funded. As you can see on the diagram, we have uh, the three types of uh, actions. CS says um, there is one, and there's three research innovation actions, and for the most part, innovation actions um, amounting to 14. So in total, we have 18. 
the main target areas of implementation being highly energy efficient and climate neutral renewable building stock, industrial facilities and the energy transition. Um, the European Commission, of course, encourages complementary trees with cluster two, namely destination two there, which is the topics with which scope addresses heritage buildings and destination three under cluster two, which is the social innovation items included in some of the topics. Under cluster three, we have destination four about the topics that address smart buildings and digitalization of buildings. And destination five, uh, the topics that address the resilience of the building stock. Um, with regards to cluster four, um, the whole cluster is relevant in particular destination one, which is highly relevant for all the topics on buildings, example for the digitalization of construction, renovation, workflows, and so forth. Um, and finally, um, there are complementaries with cluster six under destination three and destination four, um, all topics in particular, those that address sustainable renovation of the buildings. Um, I hope I covered everything. Um, again, the same principle of the do no harm um, applies here. Moving on, as we're running out of time, um, here we have um, the five topics uh, which address highly energy efficient and climate neutral EU building stock. Um, these are all innovation actions and they are forcing for 2021 with a deadline in 19, on the 19th of October. Uh, these are the other two complementing um, topics, but with um, different deadlines. Um, these next five topics um, are forcing for 2022 in the same destination. And these are the further topics again for 2022 um, within the same destination. Moving on to destination five, which is clean and competitive solutions for all transport modes. And here, what I want to mention is the areas of rail and air traffic management will be addressed through dedicated institutionalized European partnerships and therefore are not included in this work program. Um, for this cluster, we have an indicative budget of um, almost half a billion euros, otherwise 499 million euros, um, 77 projects to be funded under this area. Um, there are, um, for the most part, um, the three core type of actions, 31 in total, four being um, CSAs, 11 being uh, innovation actions and 16 being research innovation actions. The main, main, target, um, main target areas are zero emission road transport, aviation, enabling climate neutral, clean, smart, and competitive waterborne transport, and impact of transport on the environment and human health. As you can see on this slide, you have um, 10 topics across uh, three teams, which are from the bottom, waterborne transport, aviation, and zero emission road transport. So immediately you can identify these calls if you're working in these fields. Um, these are all indicated with a deadline of 7 September, and the calls will open as soon as the uh, work program is adopted. Moving on, under the same uh, topic we have, so, sorry, under the same uh, call area, we have further topics, um, 11 through 16. These are um, waterborne transport, 11 through 14, and the bottom two are about impacts of transport on environment and human health. All of them are foreseen for 2021. Um, for 2022, we have uh, Destination 5, Area 1. We have another eight topics. Under Destination 5, Area 2, in 2022, we have another seven topics for seeing. And that brings us to a close on Destination 5, which I believe is the biggest in terms of budget. Destination six, safe, resilient transport and smart mobility services for passengers and goods. 
we have um, an even balance of actions between research innovation and innovation actions. Um, 371 million euros are foreseen for, for this area with 55 projects to be funded. Um, main targets are connected um, main target areas are connected, cooperative, and automated mobility, otherwise known as CCIM, multimodal sustainable transport systems for passengers and goods, and finally, safety and resilience per mode and across all transport modes. On this slide, you can see that CCIM dominates the first three, sorry, first six topics, which are foreseen with a deadline for uh, 19 October 2021. And the bottom topics seven through 10 are about multimodal and sustainable transport systems for passengers and goods. And the, these three final topics complement the preceding ones. In total, there is 162 million euros foreseen for uh, destination six, uh, area one. Moving on uh, for 2022, again, um, we have eight topics under D601. And under D602, we have a further seven topics. Again, I urge you to look at the draft work program because here you have a synopsis and all the data is gathered in, in, one, in one slide. Um, in several slides, actually. So uh, you, you can refer to the presentation while you're looking at the actual draft work programs. And finally, the work program covers other actions not subject to call for proposals. I'm including this here because of the bottom one, but it also kind of gives you a hint where the other uh, money is going in terms of uh, cluster five budget. So. Um, the most uh, important one here is the expert contract actions. And at the bottom here, I've put the call for expression of interest for the program, entire program 2021-2027. Basically here, you can participate on your individual uh, person and apply as an expert evaluator. And you will see the other side of the coin, which basically is the evaluation process that goes in once um, a, a call um, closes and the evaluators, of course, go through all the proposals um, in a transparent way, of course, and in a fair way through the proper means. Um, please use the, the opportunity because I think this is a great way to learn um, of how the European Commission works from, from the other side um, to make sure that the best innovative projects are taken and funded. That brings um, my overview of um, cluster five to an end. Um, the next remaining se sections are on the missions and partnerships. So I will very very be very brief to stay within um, the time frame. Uh, sorry, I went back instead of forward. So um, EU missions. Um, so why, what, and how? Why, why do we um, need European missions? Basically, um, the EU missions bring uh, Europe closer to people. Um, they are, of course, um, tied to uh, European com Commission priorities, such as the Green Deal, Cancer Action Plan, and Conference on the Future of Europe. And uh, they deliver in a different way on public good. Uh, how is it done uh, or the what, let's say? So they are bold and inspirational missions with uh, wide society relevance, um, indicate a clear uh, direction. So a target or measurable time bound goal. They are also ambitious, but realistic research innovation actions. And of course, they spark innovation across disciplines, sectors, and actors. And they are based on a bottom-up approach of um, multiple solutions. Um, I put um, the image of the, the report that was issued. And I urge you as well, if you want to read up, um, to refer to this document and uh, read the mission orientation um, of the research and innovation in, in the European Union. 
and how, of course, these missions are strongly visible and with impact. Um, they achieve a bold, inspirational, and measurable goal within a set time frame, and they find solutions to some of the major challenges faced by European citizens and concentrate efforts to deliver on objectives beyond the research and innovation sphere, thus bringing Europe closer to its citizens. We have five mission areas. Um, of course, the five, uh, sorry, the three indicated um, being adaption to climate change, including societal transformation, healthy oceans, seas, and coastal and inland waters, and climate neutral and smart cities are the main contributors under cluster five. And doesn't mean that the other two do not, are not important, but they do not have a direct influence on, on this particular cluster. Uh, mission set shall be programmed uh, within the pillar two. I forgot to mention this earlier, under the global challenges and European industrial competitiveness but they may also benefit from actions carried out within other parts of the program, as well as complementary actions carried out under other union funding programs. I've uh, provided here um, what's happened thus far. I won't take too much time with this slide, but basically um, there was political validation of the proposed missions. Uh, missions have been identified in the Horizon Europe strategic plan. And at the end of the preparatory phase, the commission will take a decision on missions to enter the full implementation phase based on the criteria of, uh, of Article 7-3 uh, of the uh, FPRFP regulations for Horizon Europe. And the feasibility for success as shown by the strength of the implementation plans proposed. So um, mission implementation in practice here, um, I gave some further points. Um, they go beyond the horizon Europe, of course, to have real impact and support is needed beyond Europe, public funded uh, research innovation. So it has to align, of course, with national policies and legislation, uh, take into account national and regional strategies and align funding and financial in instruments to support uh, deployment. Thus, close cooperation with member states um, is foreseen and is defined, and synergies will, will come into play with, uh, with national and regional strategies. And of course, this is all coordinated with the European Parliament, thus linking it back to its citizens and political parties. Finally, the timeline on the missions. The first four points have already uh, been done. So now we are in quarter. Uh, two or three of 2021, and we expect the Horizon Europe work programs to be adopted and the first mission calls to uh, be indicated in this period. And of course, um, the mission implementation plans to be produced and presented. And um, the commission communication on the missions, of course, will follow. And later on this year in quarter three or quarter four, we expect the missions to enter full implementation phase and there, as mentioned earlier, will be a work program and amendment. In the next part, I'll explain briefly the European partnerships. So um, this is a new generation of objective driven and more ambitious partnerships in support of uh, agreed EU policy objectives. So what are the key features of European partnerships? They achieve strategic orientation. They have a simple architecture and toolbox and follow a common set of criteria for the life cycle. Um, of course, in terms of Horizon Europe regulations, Article 8 and Annex, Annex uh, 3. So here I gave a very uh, uh, organic overview of the three types, which are co-programmed, co-funded and institutionalized. Um, so Basically, um, co-programmed are based on memorandum of understandings or contractual agreements and implemented independently by the partners and by Horizon Europe. Um, excuse me, let me have a glass of water. Um, co-funded, they are based on joint program 
uh, joint program agreed and implemented by partners and commitment of partners for financial and in-kind contributions. And finally, institute, institutionalized um, are based on long-term um, dimensions and need for higher integration partnerships are of course based on Article 185 and 187 of the TFEU and the EIT Legal Acts for 2021 and 2027. Um, uh, since you will have the, um, the slides, I also suggest that you read the notes that I've included on, on the slides because um, I do not have time to uh, go through all of this information. But um, you have um, here on this slide the commonalities for all European partners. Of course, they all um, re uh, reach strategic orientations. So they to make a considerable contribution to achieving EU priorities. They have a common set of criteria along their life cycle. And um, as indicated in, in this final point at the bottom, the main differences are um, in the legal framework and implementation with the co-program being the simplest and the institutionalized being the most complex types of uh, partnerships. Um, since it seems we've run out of time, um, I'll just cover the, the three types quickly. So the co-program um, is based on the legal form, which is a memorandum of understanding signed between representatives of the partner and the commission. And it is estimated that EU contribution to to the 12 co-programmed partnerships will be around 8.54 billion. Um, the European co-funded partnerships, they here follow uh, the legal form through a grant agreement or um, program co-fund action uh, signed between the uh, consortium of beneficiaries and the commission. And the estimated EU contribution of the, the 16 co-funded partnerships is 2.2 billion euros. And finally, we have the institutionalized partnerships or integrated program with centralized implementation, as I like to refer to it. Um, the legal basis, as I hinted earlier, are based on Article 185 and Article 187 of the TF uh, EU, thus requiring the um, preparation and adoption of the Commission proposal and the, the decision of the European Parliament and Council. Um, Article 185 and Council Regulations, Article 187 and EIT. Um, in terms of estimated EU contribution for the institutionalized partnerships is in the range of 10.8 billion and then an additional 2.6 billion for the KICS. Um, in this slide, I show um, the 49 uh, candidate European partnerships. Um, as you can see here, um, the, the color code provides um, a description of what type of partnerships they are. As you can see, we have the largest number of uh, partnerships under cluster five. Um, going from the bottom here, we have two co-funded, which are the UT, Driving Urban Transitions and Clean Energy Transitions. Co-programmed, we have built for people, zero emission road transport, zero emission waterborne transport, batteries, and CCAM, all being co-programmed. And the institutionalized partnerships are the top four, which are clean hydrogen, clean aviation, single European sky, um, ATM research, and basically says R3, and Europe's rail. With that, I will conclude on partnerships. If you want further insights, please um, go through the presentation as um, I provide a lot of further details in, in the notes as well. Um, finally, I just want to uh, bring to the attention again that the call topics related to the co-programmed and co-funded partnerships will, will be included in Horizon uh, Europe Work Program for 2021-2022. So, um, I, I think I've covered everything here now. 
um, some important events um, that are forthcoming um, and partic of particular interest to cluster five stakeholders are the European Maritime Days, which are planned to take place in then Helder in the Netherlands on the 20th and 21st May. And we also are uh, being advised that there might be info days um, uh, towards the latter end of May. Um, they were foreseen for the week 17 to 21, but we don't have clear indications as of yet. Um, another important event is uh, a matchmaking event, which is taking place um, in June and also in a, um, on the 31st of May. So I suggest you follow these links and read up. And finally, the European Research Innovation Day is happening in, on the 23rd and 24th June. Um, these are some resources that you can use um, basically to register yourself on the portal and how to navigate um, the participant registry. And you can also check out our two minute video on how to register. This is the national contact point team. Um, you can contact any of us, any one of us for support. Please do follow our social media pages and you have um, all the channel links there. So either Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube. Um, this recording will be available on YouTube here, so you can review it at any point. And please do connect with us and you can reach to, out to us on our generic um, email address being horizonmalta at gov.mt. Um, I thank you for your, your attention. If there are any questions, I can take them now. And one final point, um, since this is a very wide um, cluster, um, myself and my colleague Tamar Eshkembri um, are the national contact points for it. So please do reach out to either one of us or our colleagues and we'll be uh, readily there to help you and support you throughout the, your um, application process. I ask my colleagues to check if there are any questions so I can take them now. Um, hi, George. Um, I, I'm not seeing any questions at this stage. Thank you, Mark. Hopefully that is because I, I gave a good presentation, not because uh, it wasn't interesting. <laughs> but if there is any questions and someone wants to put them um, via, via the microphone, please go ahead and do so now. You can unmute. In the meantime, George, I'm going to start the poll, maybe. What Thank you, you, Mark. Yes, um, we have a small poll for you just to give us an indication of the quality of the service we provide. So we would appreciate your feedback. Um, since I do not see any questions being made, uh, Mark, I think you can also stop the recording so it doesn't overextend. All right.